In this video, we're going to talk to you about why group coaching or challenges are not dead. Controversial. Um, hello, we are Dan and Mike, and we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can. And today, um, yeah, we're going to talk about why the group coaching uh, is not going to kill your business. It's not the end of your life. Uh, and it can actually be very, very useful when set up properly, when done properly, like we would do it, obviously. Um, for your business and, and, and how it's not the um, it's not the uh, the crappy demon it's made out to be by some people. It's mad. Like, I think it's probably because it, they couldn't get it to work. Let's be honest. It is. It's, it's right, literally because yeah. they can't get it to work. Yeah. So they they don't they don't really understand it. Like, no. I, I can't like I almost can't believe it that we're the only ones talking about it. I'm like, this is like a little weapon that that we can use, like uh, to help people on board coaches, to help people scale a so little bit more, to, to bring in leads. I think the other reason they don't talk about it is because I don't think it initially, see, for, the, for the graft you put into it, doesn't see an initial spike in income that they're happy with to put on the, all over their socials, for them, all these mentors. I think the more I, I delve into this world, the more I think that actually all that, they're just so self-serving is like, they, they keep saying that because yeah, it's better to have more one-to-one -one clients in on paper and all this sort of stuff. But I don't think that sending cold DMs and using a VA to threaten people in DMs is a great way to build a business of one-to-one -one clients long-term, right? Whereas group coaching model is fantastic for longer term. When you know how to use it effectively, when you actually coach people and you actually give a shit about them, plus you can actually get results with those. I feel like everyone else who slags it off couldn't get results, doesn't give a shit about people, didn't coach them properly, so didn't get the benefits of it on the back end, yeah. which is what we talk about is the group coaching I'm going to talk about this a little bit about like a paid lead magnet almost. Is like the group coaching isn't the main thing. I know it sounds ridiculous saying that out loud. The group coaching is not the main thing. You don't sit there and go, oh, the revenue you make from group coaching. No, you just pump that back into the business. It's the back end of group coaching. Again, if you're a good coach, which most of these mentors weren't, if you're a good coach, it leads to fantastic retention and fantastic business and much bigger customer lifetime value rather than the, Oh, charge them all up front. That's probably why they don't like it because you can't charge them all up front. Yeah, so, so we're like, off this one. I feel like <laughs> like we're gonna get yeah, one for one a little so bit. So like the the actual amount of people that you would get on a group coaching, um, you're gonna need to do huge numbers for it to be like retirement money. But it doesn't mean that it's it's they're not good numbers. So like for reference, we had around fifteen hundred people through our blitzers in two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Two and a half years, fifteen hundred people. Probably average, because obviously we started, we changed the price, like uh, number eight or number nine to 99. Average yeah. price, what, 120 quid? Yeah, 120, yeah. So let's say average price, 120 quid. Like, do the maths on that. Do the maths on that. 120 yeah. times 1,500. So, so you're talking, what, 180,000? 180 grand, yeah. Huh, bang on. Yeah. And that's maths. That's, that's the game. That's mathematics so, for you. 180,000 in those two and a half years. Again, a lot of money, right? But then paying for coaches, split between me and Dan, and it's done over two and a half years, you kind of go, it's not it's not retirement money. Now, we know that we would upsell around 30% of those people. So 30% of 1,500, 500, right? 500 people. Cal I need to calculate that again. Aren't I? 500 people. Now, yeah. let's say those 500 people are paying 200 pounds a month. And let's just say that they stay for six months. Pretty conservative. Let's say they stay for six months. So how much is that? 600,000 pounds. 600,000 pounds. So we didn't only just make the 180, but we made the 600,000 pounds off the back end of that. And that is conservative pricing because yeah. we're getting people retained for I, much longer than six. I still have one of my one-to-one -one clients from our first ever blitz. There you go. By the way, on my books at the moment. There you go. Um, so yeah, overall in total, that's 780,000 pounds over two and a half years as a conservative estimate. You can't tell me that's just from group coaching. You can't tell me that's not worth doing. You can't. I, you can't sit here. People can't. I can't hear it when someone says, "Oh, it's dead. It doesn't work," and all this sort of shit. Right now, I know there's some people doing it for clickbait. I know some people are doing it from a point of view and all this sort of stuff. Right, and I agree with some of the reasons they're talking about. There are certain time points in your business where you don't need to to kind of do that. Um, but there's this assumption that if you do group coaching, that it's like the only thing you have to offer then, or it's, or it has to be then run all the time. Now, we ran blitzes whenever we felt they were necessary, which was, we, we were lucky enough, we had a big enough business, big enough audience that we could run them more regularly. There's nothing stopping you running a group coaching as like a challenge once or twice a year to get that back end. So on the back end there, we've made three times the amount of money as on the front end of a group coaching. The reason that that is so successful, the reason it works so well is that 
The people who've already paid you money and got a result are more likely to pay you more money. So we set up our group coaching as a, we framed it as a great product on the front end. And like, if you buy this, it's fantastic, you're gonna get great results. And then what we did on the back end was week six, hey, book in for a call because you know what? This group coaching really isn't that great compared to our one-to-one. -one. It's not that fantastic. It's actually, you've got great results, but with one-to-one, -one, you get all this extra support, all this extra accountability, all this extra guidance. You're probably gonna see these sorts of results. And we showed them pictures of people who've been with us for a year. They then upsell, they then go on, and they then go go stay for six months to a year, et cetera, et cetera, do photo shoots, make us look great, right? And if you have the group coaching model like that, you, it's not it's not group coaching or bust. It's not like if you do that, you can never do one-to-one -one again, or people are only ever gonna know you for, for group coaching. It's just a tool in your toolbox for getting people into your business that are that want your offer, that want your thing, and gives you an opportunity to be a better coach because you coach them. It's like, it's madness. So it's like, all you're doing is making something more tangible. So you can see that it's six weeks or seven weeks or eight weeks or however long you run it, right? It's something tangible that somebody kind of knows what they're getting when they sign up to it. Okay, six weeks of rapid fat loss. Cool. Okay, and it's cheap. It's 99 pounds. That's like so underpriced. So you know that you're going to over deliver even with a watered down service. And the reason why you price it so cheap is to remove or lower the risk significantly. So everybody that was on the fence goes, yeah, I'm going to jump in because that's very, very low risk for what I get. And you're also going to pull people in by virtue of the fact that, wow, that sounds amazing for such a low low price. You're going volume. So again, some people try to price group coaching. And I've seen people do group coaching program, 450 quid. What? Like, that's the same as your fucking one-to-one. -one. What are you doing? Yeah. Instead, price it very, very cheap. And then wow the people that are in there. Because if they're getting a, a service like that for £99 pounds for, for six weeks, for example... And what do they get for 200 yeah. per month? So it's seen as almost paid lead generation. All you're doing is, again, capturing all of these people that would not have come into you or it might have taken longer to come into you or so on and so forth if you mm. just had one offer, one one-to-one -one or nothing. Have a little middle tier. And the way that it works is that you don't run it evergreen. So again, this you see this argument of, well, people would just sign up for the cheaper one. No, 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 they wouldn't. Not when you only run three a year. So in theory, if you run three a year and let's say they're six weeks, that's only 18 weeks out of the year that they're able to be coached by you then. Mm -hmm. So, and as we all know as coaches, six weeks isn't a long enough time to get a result. So they do the six weeks, they love what you're doing, they've built a bond with their coach, they're getting some results. It's not long enough to get full results yet and they don't want to stop. When's the next one? When's the next group coaching? Oh, not for another three months. Okay, so what alternative do they have? Go backwards or do they upsell to one-to-one? -to -one? So it's the upsells into one-to-one -one, and it can be gr a great way of taking the pressure off signing up one-to-one -one clients. So at the moment, as coaches, you're probably trying to sign up one-to-ones. You're worried about when the next one comes in. You're worried when you get a little bit of churn. Whereas when you have a group coaching and let's just say you get 30 people on it and we've just told you that roughly 30% should sign up after, you kind of hedge your bets that nine or 10 are going to come into coaching off the, off the back mm -hmm. of that and it removes that pressure. So you go, well, actually, I'm good because I'm wowing these 30 people. They're getting some good results and they're going to come into me at the back, uh, off the back of my group coaching. I think, look, one of the cons that I've seen talked about is the fact that it doesn't get good quality people into it. That's one of the things I've seen as a, as a thing. And I, look, I will say, that of course, you're going to get some people who take a punt, spend 100 quid uh, and, and don't see any results. Well, they weren't going to give you any money anyway for one-to-one. -one. They just weren't going to sign up. No, not, not, a million, not a million years. So but you're, you're getting paid for them to not be a good client. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. As opposed to not getting paid. So you're, and, and then also as well, you can then almost go, right, well, they're not gonna sign up for one-to-one -one coaching. Or to flip that on its head, some people sign up for a group coaching program, realize they need more accountability, can't do it, turn into some of your better clients. They go, actually, I need one-to-one -one support. So there's, a, there's the argument to be had for that as well. But the other thing I will say is that the thing that group coaching is great for is it's almost like a pre-qualification. It's, I've had people go to group coaching that I think are gonna be great clients. And I've gone through the group coaching and gone, oh, I don't wanna work with them one-to-one, -one, not mm -hmm. me. Like they're asking stupid questions. They don't know what they're doing. No, it doesn't fit my niche, whatever, right? So it's almost, a, they're, they're almost paying you for you to pre-qualify them for your one-to-one -one coaching. Why would you not wanna do that? Mm -hmm. Why would that not be a good idea, right? So there's always gonna be people as well that just do one-to-one. -one. Like I wouldn't personally sign up for a group program. I just wouldn't do it. If I knew someone was offering it, and it was cheaper, but I had a one-to-one -one service. I'd just go for the one-to-one -one service. It's not for those people that know they want the one-to-one. -one. It's for anyone who's in the middle of that, 
you're getting going to people who aren't interested at all in what you do, people who definitely want one-to-one -one at some point, even if they don't want it right this second, but they know they want one-to-one -one with you, they're waiting for the right time. We're well, just going to capture everyone in the middle then who's unsure, possibly wants one-to-one, -one, but isn't, it wants to try it out first, or people who are not really sure, probably want a quick fix, do a six-week anyway, weren't probably, probably going to sign up for one-to-one. -one. I, I don't see many cons to that, do you? Like, I don't see many issues with, with that along the way. And, and from the Blitz program we did, I had, I've had a client, again, I still work with now, I think she was from like second or third one. When she signed up and I got all the assessment stuff through, I thought she was going to be an absolute nightmare. And I, and I hold my hands up that I prejudged someone based on some of the information and the questions they asked, got on a sales call, and I was like, I'm still not 100% sure. Still with me now, two years later, one of my best clients done a photo shoot, love working with her, she's great fun just really quiet to start with, was unsure, was nervous, been let down before. I, you just can't judge it. You can't say for a fact that like you're going to get poor quality leads because even some of those ones that come in and look poor quality, they're not. So, so on, on that, you kind of go, um, there's this argument of like, how do you market both? You're not marketing both. No. You're marketing the same thing. You're marketing fat loss, getting in shape, health, results. fitness, results. Yeah. You're marketing the same thing. It's just the person listening to it is going to be attracted to one or the other. It's still the same person with the same problems. Mm -hmm. So it's just that this person, like you said, might you know be a bit quieter, might be a little bit more apprehensive, might have had the fingers wearing before, maybe has a little bit lower, uh, you know, less money, so they don't want to take the risk on the fault. It might be that they're a little bit scared to reach out personally to one of the coaches, but actually if there's a product and there's a link there to buy, then yeah, I'll get that. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the poorer quality of client claim, how many people from Blitz have you had do a shoot? Loads. 15 plus? Probably same. 15, 20? Yeah. And then Jimmy's all probably from Blitz. Bex, all yep. probably from Blitz. Yep. So there's the argument where people say, you get this, but where, but where's the evidence Where's mm -hmm. the evidence that they're poor quality clients? Because we've got evidence that is contrary to that. So the way, and again, for those people that are looking um, at scaling the business, what happens when you're at 50, 60, 70, 80, one-to-one -one clients, right? And you've got no more time in, in the day. What, how do you scale your business then? Because you've either got A, take on more clients, we don't have more time, or B, increase the prices but that's only going to be increased by a, a certain amount of uh, a certain amount of money, right? So you're limited to the amount of money that you're going to be able to, to scale with that. So let's just say you have 80 clients in your full and you can increase your price by 20 quid. That gets you an extra 1,600 quid a month. Good. But again, it's not, it's not any significant changes to the business. So how do you scale? Having a, a more leverageable product where you can where you can service more people or, or, or fulfill more clients for a shorter amount of time with still a great product that gets results, that gets more results for your brand, that you can then allow a coach to come on and coach within that um, group coaching. It's a very, very, very smart way of being able to do that, that somebody signs up for a lower cost product, signs up with your brand, and they get coached by another coach. So you are essentially taking the revenue from that group coaching yourself with no extra time served by you, essentially, other than to upskill your coach and be on hand for your coach, potentially. And then your coach can then get the back-end sign-ups off of that, which, if they're on as a full-time coach, you're going to then probably take a percentage commission split. It's, it, there really are very few, few cons to it, like, other than a bit of from work, maybe, that kind of thing, right? And it, it's it's worth remembering that as... as Mike said before in terms of like, you don't have to run these all the time. Like as a general rule, the better times to run them are January because most people want to start something in January. Again, more traditionally lower cost products, they start that in January. Uh, September, which is around uh, post or summer holidays where most people are getting back in a routine in terms of work, um, you know, a lot of people take uh, some time in August off with some holidays with kids. A lot of workplaces, they quiet down in August for that reason where bosses are away and, and things are quieter. And then the other one is, is around Easter, just after Easter time, around April, people are getting ready for summer. They obviously leave it too late, but you can use that to your advantage. I love how you didn't go in chronological order there. It was stressing me out. That you, I, I, that you jumped from January to, off, af to yeah. after summer. Yeah. I was thinking, but what so about pre-summer? The, the, reason, the reason I did that, the reason I did that is that that's the order of priority I would do them in. If I was going to run two, I would do January, September. I wouldn't. If, if I was going to do one, I'd do January. And if I was going to do three, I'd then throw in the Easter one. Top, I, you could make an argument for like the Easter one being relevant for the summer. 
I would argue it's dependent on your niche, yeah. who you work with. I think if you work with more parents, family people, I would go September. Um, because again, people are getting back into routine. The kids get back to school. They want to kind of like do something about it. Um, it's niche specific. Number one is January. That's the, that's the prime kind of time yeah. because one-to-one -one sales at that time are low. People try and do things themselves. They try the lower cost products, right? All that sort of stuff. And the argument there is, oh, are you just adding to all the shit that's out there? No, you're not. Because your product is the bee's knees. It's fucking loads better than all the other shit out there. So you, you've got a duty to sell to your audience at that time because your program will get them results. It is the best thing. They are going to do some shitty Joe Wicks plan, some crappy influencer plan that's cheaper and all that sort of stuff. You have to, in our opinion, sell that because it is the best option at a time when arguably you don't get loads of one-to-one -one signups, which is weird. You think it would be, but, but you don't. Those that have been around long enough will know that. Um, so I'm, trying to think of anything, I'm just trying to think of anything else I can do in non chronological order now, just to really annoy you, <laughs> like just in general. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, look, that's, that's kind of how we've done it. And, and obviously varying through the year as well, our audiences have remained somewhat the same, but we've noticed ups and downs and when we've launched certain things. And they're the dates that we found. You tend to get more people on them, even though you run through a similar sort of marketing um, process. So just... So if you want to learn how to run your own group coaching, um, we have access to that with, are we going to, are we selling our group coaching playbook? Yeah, yeah. man, sell it. So we've got a playbook, group coaching playbook, everything yeah. that you need uh, to um, set up, um, run, launch, everything. Uh, you know, we've got all of the, the priority list details, all of the email sequencing. We've got the templates of what you should, you know, actually deliver. We've got everything done for you step by step. So take a little look at that. Um, it'll be somewhere around, we'll, buzzing around our I'll, stuff. We'll put the link in somewhere. Or just, or just message us on Instagram. I think it's, um, it's 400 quid, um, which is absolutely ridiculous when you think if you charge a hundred pound and you get four people on it, you've made your money back. And, and you've then got it forever. You might, you've got it forever. And then you can also sign one person on the back end of that and make money and being positive. So if like Mike said, using those numbers, you've got 30 people, well, that's 3,000 pound. If you sign up 10 of those and they stay for six months, well, we should probably get more than that actually for it. Actually, no, we fuck actually it. Should, we yeah. should give you, you should give us a percentage of that as well going forward. But mm. it's literally what we've done with, with, with our program, uh, literally how we run through it. Um, so that is in the, our circle group. You might as well join that as well for a hundred pound a month, get in the members group, get the group coaching playbook and you'll be absolutely minted. So there you go. So if you haven't already, like it, subscribe, all that stuff, share to your MySpace, um, yeah. put it on your Bebo wall. Um, get out there, innit? You know, all of that stuff. Catch you later. Just